Hello to you all, I'm Jeremy Von Garcia and this segment of Inside the Horror is about lighting. When watching a horror movie, you probably realize at some moment there was a sense of fear beginning to rise and you thought to yourself, why am I getting scared when I know there's something going to pop out any second? That's the, that's the thing, you truly don't know why you're in fear. Your mind just gets drawn into the movie, making you get a sense of the theme that's taking place before your eyes. It truly helps horror movies that lighting is one of the key aspects that draws the eyes in. In most scary movies, there's a lack of light and it makes a focused view for the watcher. And the lack of light also casts a sense of uranus that starts to bring up qu unanswered questions. So this lack of light makes the unanswered questions for the audience appear pretty frequently. Frequently, So this in turn makes them pretty much want to know more and so it gets them really drawn in and really like get the chance of being scared. And so it's easy to say that for most independent films lighting tends to be a big issue because well lighting is so hard to control. It tends to... Uh, tends to be lacking such great sense that it just doesn't like represent a believable situation for the actor or the audience. So this issue is so huge for her because the audience mind won't invoke fear. It, it's truly an area that can be misread easily as well. So my friend, my good friend Barry Green can show you a little demo on different lighting scenarios and how it could just totally change like the message given by your film. Some pretty stark contrast because we only have one light source, so there's no fill, there's no anything coming in to reduce this. It's all pure pitch black. We're lighting this whole scene with this one light. So coming from this side, obviously it's a very different feel than what we had aimed straight on. It's a little bit more dramatic. There's some shape to it. It's a little bit more cinematic. But let's keep going around here. Let's light this thing, this scene directly from the side. That's a dramatic look. This is a case of you know, you got somebody, we don't know whether they're good or evil. They're, they're half light, they're half dark. It's, it's a very shadowed look and it's, it's very dramatic. It's a very harsh look. But if you're looking for really stark, harsh contrast, this is a way to get it. Next place we're gonna go, we're gonna move around to about the eight o'clock position on the clock. If the camera is pointed directly at 12 o'clock, this is about eight o'clock. As you can see, this would be more of a, a hard drama look. Everything that we're doing is serving the artistry and the emotion of the scene. The more we put in shadow, the more mystery there is to that character. We don't really know what they're up to or what they're all about, and it creates curiosity. This is not a romantic comedy look. This is a mystery or a drama or a horror movie or something like that. There's a lot that we don't know about this character because we just don't see it. We only see a little bit. So with this exact same light, all I've done is move the position. We went from a deer in the headlights look, which was totally filling her out, to a very stark hidden look. We got a beautiful, strong, bright key in here, and then complete darkness on this side here. See, as you just saw, that beautiful woman became a figure of the unknown. For all we could have known, she could have been a cold-blooded killer. So lighting is a huge role in film. It can completely change the message of a film just by the change in the position, intensity, or the amount of light. So for our two actual film examples, we will analyze Ringu and Eraserhead and hopefully find the key light, or best known as the main light, and we will hopefully also find the fill and the black light if there are any present, and show the importance of how it gives the me like that message across. Okay, with the racer head, there appears to be minimal lighting going on with this scene. Like, there's really not that much that's supposed to like kind of like be like, why is this dude staring at thermostat? And there just seems to be backlighting right there. But then suddenly, I think the scene jumps to a key light in the middle of that thermostat, and it's supposed to like be like, whoa, there's something in there. So it's supposed to draw the audience in. But then when it's drawn in, it goes back to one point lighting. And so it kind of leaves you kind of a little bit like question like, wait, what is this? Is this some sort of stage? Like what's going on? And so then it just pulls right back out and leaves you with a ton of questions. And it jumps right back to three point lighting on the main character. Okay, so for Ringu, you can see that it's mainly three-point lighting. The main light's coming in from the light, with the fill light coming in from the left, because there's still a little shadows there. 
then the backlight is just filling in the hair, making it stand out a little more. But then it goes something into a more of a kind of like two point lighting. And so from there, if you freeze frame, you could really see that our hands are focused and like the backside was just filled out by a fill light. And so it really makes her like a lot more intimidating, and scary for the actor. And it makes it a lot more believable for the audience. So it comes pretty apparent that lighting plays an important role for horror movies. The lighting is just also not really the main aspect. Like there's the different types of lights too that give off certain colors. Like some lights are a little more white, some are a little more orange, some are a little more blue. And so these different lighting colors really give like a different atmosphere for certain situations. So like if you mix like a red, like a warmer color light, with like a darker blue, it could give the situation of like, whoa, don't go over there. There is something bad going on. And so, as um, my friend Barry Greens, he will show you a situation with uh, one of their demo clips, and he will show you how warm and cold light can uh, give off a great feel for horror movies. Norman. Norman. So here we go, this is the opposite. We, we're just playing again with the color temperature, with different colors to add the, the, the depth to the scene. Of course, if you analyze this image, I'm sure if you go to a forest, this situation will never happen. But this is film, this is the magic we're trying to create, and I think it's clearly believable. To talk about how this scene was structured, and this was very simply done. This is a gorgeous scene, I think, but it's created with only two lights. We had one HMI off on the side casting a blue light which illuminates him and, and fills in these corners here. And in a nighttime scene, you don't really need to motivate where the light's coming from. We, the audience, are a little more forgiving of, mm -hmm. of trying to understand. So uh, in interiors, practical lights and such is very important, but at night, we kind of can get away with, with murder. And that's what this man's trying to do is get away with murder. So the background is a very simple technique. There was a orange street light. A street light with a very orange light there. Why not using the real lights that we have there? Use what's already there. So there's an orange street light here. The woods were here. So we filled in this intermediary gap with a $39 party fogger. We had a man run back and forth, fogging in this entire area with a bottle of fog fluid. And it creates this absolutely wonderful, contrasty background of, of fog. So we have our man in the foreground lit with blue, and the background is in red. Now this sends a very different message of this isn't just about creating a good looking shot. Mm -hmm. This is about working with the director to tell his story. Yeah, exactly. So if we toggle to the little mouse to feed, what you had in there was you had warm lighting inside where she is and blue lighting outside and the blue is where the evil is. Exactly. This is where the bad is coming from. It's called you don't want to live outside. Night is scary, it, it's, it's primal, it's programmed into us, the night is scary. And so he's coming in out of the night and he's a very intimidating bad figure. She is here in the warm and she's our nice figure. Now if we toggle over to the other scene, what we have here is a guy who's engaged in very evil behavior. And so we've turned that around. We've got red light behind him and he is in the blue. So that was not just a choice to make a neat looking shot, that mm -hmm. was actually to enforce and reinforce the theme of what the director had chosen. Yeah, of course, you speak with the director, he tells you the ideas he has in mind, so you try to use your technique, the lights, the colors, the camera, to try to tell the story better. Cinematography is not just about making good looking shots, it's about making the right shots look good. Of course. So, thanks again to Barry Green for that good demo and um, so with your newfound knowledge on lighting and the different styles of lighting, different types of lighting, different like positions of lighting, you should really be able to like make a really good horror movie. It's just you're gonna have to really practice on it because lighting is seriously one hard thing like control, especially if it's outdoor lighting. Man, that's just that's tough stuff. So thanks again for watching Inside the Horror. Guys, better keep tuned. So see ya.